Welcome to another Inside Lansing, where today's guest is Chief Chad Coinga from the Lansing Fire Department. Chief, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for asking me to come. So we had you on a year ago, and a lot of things have changed in that yes. year. Big year this year for everybody. Wait a and considering that we're talking about COVID-19 here and the pandemic, that uh, you being in the you know fire department and dealing with also medical you probably have a lot of changes that you guys had to go through to oh, yeah. compensate for like what's going on out there. So maybe you could talk a little bit about how COVID-19 has impacted the fire department. Well, it's uh, really impacted us immensely. You know, we went from kind of always our normal operations to really having to step it up to really guarding now, uh, not only the safety of our patients, but the safety of our personnel as well. Um, again, mid-March was a shock to everybody. I yes. mean, the Lansing Fire Department, as well as the surrounding communities. We've really had to put into place a lot of protections for our, our personnel, again, as well as the community we serve. What are some of the protections you've had to put in? Um, well, again, w the first thing uh, what was on everybody's mind at the, in March was PPE. We had to work on securing sufficient amounts to kind of get our department through the crisis, and we continue to do that as far as our PPE, but it was getting our personnel uh, the glasses or face masks if they needed it, um, the surgical masks, N95 respirators, um, gowns, gloves. It was just a myriad of, of stuff we had to have to make sure we were protected. So you feel that you guys were prepared, you guys were prepared as quick as you could be and, and were able to still provide a great service? Yeah, given the way it all shook out, yeah, we were very fortunate. Um, we had a good stockpile on hand um, when it hit and then we were really able to network with a lot of other suppliers to really secure good amounts. Um, at the board meetings, I would, you know, kind of report kind of a, the status of our stockpile. And, you know, given the, you know, the guys I have in the office, we were really able to secure good amounts that have helped protect our people. Great. Yeah. And we see you out there all the day serving us, so we appreciate it. Oh, and we're glad to do it. One of the new things we could talk about was the new fire truck that came in. Right. You had a push-in service. Now, I think what's important about that is that you guys have never done that. You guys have never done a push-in before, but this is something you wanted to start? This is something we wanted to start. One of the things we felt uh, when we came into the fire department, when we kind of came in as the new management team, was we were looking to start some traditions. Fire service is historically rooted in tradition, and this was one of those that we thought would be a good one to kind of help us start a uh, push towards kind of incorporating tradition into our department. The push-in was cool. It was something that was new to me. Um, I give it to uh, Deputy Chief Grady, who kind of came up with that idea, as well as the members of the engine committee, that pushing that in would be kind of a cool thing. It was great to see um, the turnout we, we had there. We invited the former chiefs who had a hand in that um, to come out and help push it in as well, and we were glad to see that they made it there as well. So it's a new engine, and New usually means it comes with some extra things that maybe that you didn't have before. What were some of the nice things about this engine? It kind of has a lot of the same things, probably some stuff that made it easier for our guys to work with. They lowered the hose bed, so it's not as big of a step up yep. um, when we're getting up there. So it's a little easier on, you know, just your body when you're doing that. Our ladder rack on the officer's side, actually, you would pull it down instead of having to work over your heads. We had a compartment specially built to carry all of our ALS equipment in it. Another aspect is training. You guys have to train. You have to, you have a training facility in town. Mm -hmm. And some of the additions you made recently there were a standpipe and sprinkler system. Maybe you could talk a little bit about why you have that system out there. What does that help with? Well, the standpipe and sprinkler system um, is something that we run into in multifamily uh, properties. Not very often you can go into those multifamily properties, practice hooking into those and getting uh, getting the sprinkler systems going. You know, it's, it's just a way to simulate it for you. Exactly, it's a, it's a great way to simulate it. Hands-on experience for the guys that are engineering the engine to go hook up, get the pump up to the pressure it needs to be. And it also gives the crews inside a chance to connect to that standpipe and work off of that line. This was a great partnership between us and the Pipe Fitters Local who donated all of the manpower Okay. And then we just had to purchase the equipment. But, I mean, that was just awesome. We can't thank them enough. So training is definitely a cornerstone for you guys, for the fire department. Definitely, yeah. Training is probably one of the biggest things we do. And we're really, we're continually trying to kind of train, you know, better and more often. Just so, you know, everybody is good at the craft. 
Now, one important thing is that we're in the month of October, and people, some people don't know this, I think, but we like to remind them that the month of October is fire safety month. Right. I'm just curious, what are some safety tips that you can get, tell people about, and what, what have you been doing to get out there and educate people? Well, as far as what we've been doing to educate, again, hearkening back to our earlier conversation, COVID's put a damper on a lot of that. Our ability for us to go into the schools and do kind of what we have historically done has just been taken away this year by COVID. We've really tried to reach out uh, via our webpage. We've put a lot of fire prevention tips on there. Um, we have a coloring contest going on as well. So if anybody wants to check that out, they can enter that for Fire Prevention Month as well. Um, and again, Fire Prevention Month is one of those months where, you know, it's really about fire safety in the home and also, you know, checking those smoke detectors and, and carbon monoxide detectors. So maybe check out your website. I mean, COVID's here, but We've got the age of technology. We can get information to people many ways that don't have to get us within six Exactly. Kind of kinda like everybody else. We've all moved everything to the web. So, yeah. yeah. Something else that I think is obvious but people don't think about is that you have to also hire new people sometimes. And Correct. recently you had a campaign uh, to hire some new firefighters. I believe that campaign is finished. It is. It just actually, um, the testing portion of it wrapped up this past Saturday on October 10th. We were excited at the turnout uh, we received, hoping to get a bunch of good hires out of this this class. You know, we're excited to see where these hires can take us. We're definitely can use the personnel. Been looking forward to getting some more new members on board. What do you look for in a new firefighter? Well, all our firefighters need to be state certified to take the test as well as be paramedics. Those are the two really big qualifiers that we look for. So last time you were on the show, we talked a little bit about the fire admin building, which is at the old Village Hall Correct. location. Uh, that everyone knows about in town and now there's a sign out there so people can see it So what are some of the updates you've done since then to make that building come into its own? All right Well, since we last met we were able to move our fire prevention bureau into that building So now they operate out of there every day of the week So we've kind of consolidated all of our operations under one roof and we continue to do updates to our classroom area Going back to training our, our on-duty shifts can come in there and get their training done We also have been working at kind of replacing some of the flooring that's old. Um, I've been there. It yeah, is old. It's it is very, old, it's yeah. very but old, it, old flooring. You know, we've really done a lot of good things uh, with that building. We're continuing to do some more uh, things. Um, and we're going to address some of our outdoor uh, glass as far as our entry and uh, window systems as well. Are there any other renovations happening at any other fire stations around the area? Yeah, I have some projects going for a couple of our fire stations. I know at Station 29, we went and got the uh, parking lots done. Those parking lots hadn't been addressed for quite some years, so it's nice to have those done. Uh, we still have some small exterior uh, items we want to be able to check off the list, too, at Station 29. Our headquarter facilities, again, we, we were able to put some signage up, and we did address that parking lot there as well. Um, that was another parking lot that had probably outlived its usefulness. So it's nice to have that parking lot done. Also because the food pantry uses that on Tuesdays as well. So it's a good stable surface for everybody. I just want to finish off by talking about this is your second year in, second time on the show. It's been a year. Maybe you could give us a little look back as to how this last year went. It's been something that I would have never imagined. Um, some of the stuff I've gone, you know, worked through is you would never think it would, uh, you know, you'd work through items like this, but I haven't regretted it once. I am so happy that I have this job um, as fire chief for the Lansing Fire Department. I can't thank, you know, the village, starting with the mayor, administrator, all the trustees, all the departments I work with. I mean, it's been a great partnership with all those people involved. Um, it's been a great, you know, even with the guys and I work with on a day-to-day -day basis. We do have our, you know, we have our struggles, but the, it's all, you know, we're all moving towards, you know, the goal of really getting things working smoothly. And it's slowly but surely we are going to get there. And I, I haven't regretted a minute of it. It's been excellent. Chief Chad Goinga, thank you again for being on the show. Well, thanks for having me. I'm, maybe we can do it in three years. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Inside Lansing. <music>